human nutrition, and much of this video is to do with the process of digestion. This is geared towards leaving surf biology, and this is a summary video just to help you get to grips with this topic. We'll start by defining digestion. Digestion is the physical, often referred to as mechanical and chemical breakdown of food. So basically digestion is breaking down food into molecules that are small enough to be absorbed into the body. This means those molecules then can pass into the blood and then onwards and into cells. Another important definition is nutrition. Nutrition is the way in which an organism obtains and uses its food. So humans are animals and we are heterotrophic, meaning that we cannot make our own food. So we have to take in food made by other organisms. Food is really important for health and a balanced diet is essential for health. You must be able to explain what it is. It's a diet with the correct amounts of each nutrient. And when you consider a balanced diet, you have to include variety and moderation. A person's age, sex and activity level will influence how much they will need to eat. That's very important to consider as well. So a balanced diet has the correct amounts of each of the nutrients. There is variety and you also employ moderation so you don't eat too many fats and oils. And you make reference to the food pyramid if you're given this in an exam question. There are four stages in human nutrition and you have to know each of those. The first begins with ingestion, then there's digestion, absorption and egestion. Ingestion is taking in food through the mouth. Digestion is breaking down the food and you employ mechanical and chemical methods. Absorption is the food passes from the small intestine into the blood and on into the cells and egestion is the elimination of undigested and unabsorbed food through the anus. That's a tricky one. Each of those four processes take place somewhere within the alimentary canal. This is another name for the digestive system. And it's literally a tube that begins with the mouth and ends with the anus. This diagram here is a really rough sketch. Just bear that in mind. It's not absolutely perfect, but you should be able to draw a very simplistic diagram yourself. The process begins with ingestion. Food is taken into the mouth and then immediately digestion commences because the teeth crush and grind the food. That's mechanical digestion and the action of amylase acting on starch that ends enzyme action is chemical digestion. It's very important that you know the dental formula and there is a separate video on that so please watch it. The food gets swallowed and passes into your pharynx which is your throat and it's like a ball or a lump so it's known as a bolus of food. So the bolus of food gets swallowed, passes into your pharynx or your throat, continues on its journey downwards. However there is this little structure known as the epiglottis. This is a flap of cartilage that prevents the food from entering the windpipe, the trachea and it's located at the entrance to the larynx, your voice box. So the food moves onwards down into the esophagus and it's pushed onwards by peristalsis, these rhythmic waves of muscular contraction because the esophagus is made of smooth muscle and so it can contract. The food is pushed onwards down through the esophagus and eventually will make its way into the stomach. Food will enter the stomach when the cardiac sphincter muscle relaxes. The stomach is a J-shaped muscular bag. Cells in the wall of the stomach secrete hydrochloric acid. So the pH within the stomach is very low, approximately between 1 and 2. This low pH denatures the amylase produced in the salivary glands and it also activates pepsinogen to pepsin, that protease. There is cells in the stomach which also produce mucus, slightly alkali mucus, and this protects the stomach from the acid. And also another protective feature is that inactive pepsinogen only gets activated in the lumen of the stomach when it mixes with the acid away from the wall. In the stomach there is both mechanical and chemical digestion. When the pyloric sphincter muscle relaxes, food leaves the stomach and enters the small intestine. The upper portion is the duodenum and it's this substance called chyme which enters the small intestine. It's very acidic and it's acted on immediately by bile and pancreatic juices. Bile is produced by the liver and stored in the gallbladder. Bile emulsifies fats, turns large droplets of fats into many smaller ones. Bile raises the pH of the acidic chyme. Bile contains salts, no enzymes. As well as the bile acting on the chyme, there are secretions from the pancreas also. The pancreas has an endocrine function. It produces and secretes insulin. Insulin is a hormone. The pancreas also has an exocrine function, meaning that it produces and secretes digestive enzymes and exocrine means into a tube, in this case the pancreatic duct. So the pancreas makes and secretes pancreatic lipase, amylase and protease. These enzymes are produced in the pancreas, but they act in the small intestine. These enzymes work best in a slightly alkaline environment 
pH of greater than 7, less than 9. So the acidic chyme left the stomach and has entered into the small intestine, the upper part of the small intestine known as the duodenum. The midsection is known as the jejunum and the final section is known as the ileum. So we mostly are concerned with the duodenum and the ileum. All of the small intestine is made of smooth muscle and smooth muscle can contract, so peristalsis is ongoing. Digestion and absorption occur in the small intestine, so both of these processes. Digestion is completed in the small intestine and it's largely by the action of enzymes. Enzymes that are secreted by the pancreas and also enzymes that are secreted by cells in the intestinal wall. At the end of all of this chemical digestion, the products of digestion are monosaccharides such as glucose, amino acids and fatty acids and glycerol. The monosaccharides, they're carbohydrates. The amino acids came from proteins and the fatty acids and glycerol from lipids. Digestion is complete and those products of digestion need to be absorbed. They need to pass from the small intestine into the blood. Most absorption takes place in the jejunum and ileum, but for your leaving cert, you're mostly concerned with the ileum. The small intestine is really well adapted for absorption. It has a large surface area and this is achieved because the small intestine is highly folded and it's covered in villi, these little projections, and the villi have microvilli. So what are these villi? One of them is known as a villus and this is a diagram that you should know. You should be able to draw it and label it. Really important. The villi are really important. There are many million of them so they greatly increase the surface area for absorption. Each individual villus is thin walled. It's only one cell thick so this allows for a very rapid diffusion. On the surface of each of those individual cells are these little microvilli. These further increase the surface area. Each villus has a good blood supply so this allows for a rapid diffusion of molecules into the blood. The cells that make up each of the villi, they have many mitochondria, which is very important for the production of ATP required for active transport. At the centre of each villus is a lacteal, a lymphatic capillary, and this is where the products of fat digestion are absorbed into the lymphatic system. When those products of digestion are being absorbed, it means they're leaving the small intestine, they're passing through the walls of the villi. This happens by two processes, diffusion and and active transport. It just depends on the substance. The amino acids and monosaccharides will enter the blood and go to the liver via the hepatic portal vein. And there's a video on the functions of the liver that I recommend you watch. The products of lipid digestion, will they enter the lymphatic system and they pass into the blood at the subclavian vein at the base of the neck, the left subclavian vein. Material which has not been digested or absorbed passes into the large intestine and it's in the large intestine where water is absorbed by osmosis. That's a really key function and in fact lots of people would say the water is reabsorbed because the water came mostly from secretions as part of the digestive process. Vitamins are also absorbed, vitamins B and K and these are produced by symbiotic bacteria in the large intestine. Symbiotic means they give benefit. It's important that you can label key parts of the large intestine so the cecum, the appendix, the ascending, transverse and descending colon, the rectum and the anus. If you're asked to label a diagram of the large intestine, always go for a minimum of three labels. Put in the cecum, consider those sections of the colon as one, put in the rectum and I would put in the appendix too. Finally, faeces is expelled through the anus. This is in fact egestion. Egestion is the elimination or the removal of undigested, unabsorbed food. Egestion. So that was our summary of human nutrition. There are other videos which contain important information pertinent to the exams on digestion and nutrition, so watch them. Bear in mind, know that the buccal cavity is the mouth, learn the dental formula, list the functions of the liver and revise biomolecules, enzymes and the lymphatic system. They're all tied in with this. So the very best of luck with all of the revision. Hope it's going well, little and often.